with it, what looks like to be the Steelers offensive line for week one against the Buffalo Bills, there's a lot of people wondering, are they ready to face a defensive line with Ed Oliver and they got Tremaine Edmonds at linebacker? There's a lot of problems that could happen if the Steelers offensive line isn't together, but are they? They got a lot of young talent, but that doesn't doom them. Joining me to talk about this will be Jenna Harner of Channel 11 WPXI. We got all of that. Stefan Tua talk, Joe Hayden talk, all sorts of things on your Pittsburgh Steelers right here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. And today I'm joined, as per the usual on Fridays, Jenna Harner of Channel 11 WPXI in Pittsburgh. Jenna, how you doing on this Friday? I am wonderful. Happy Friday. It's so nice to kind of be back and have some consistency. Glad to be here as always. And so excited to talk about things ahead for the Steelers. Absolutely. We, there's a lot of, there's lots of things to talk about. I wanted to lead off with the offensive line though, because Zach Banner was put to the injured reserve on uh, Wednesday, which put serious questions in about what the plan will be moving forward. Now we know from talking to players that Right now, the, how it looks in practice is you got Dan Moore's at left tackle, Kevin Dotson at left guard, Kendrick Green at center, uh, Trey Turner at right guard, and then Chukuma Korfor back at right tackle where he played last season. And Jenna, there's some concern because now you're saying, wait a minute, you're putting a fourth round rookie to guard Ben's blind side? That sounds like disaster waiting to strike. But Dan Moore Jr. has come on very strong in training camp. He had to go up against Alex Highsmith and Melvin Ingram for over a month. And I think he's gotten better for it. Now, does that mean he's ready for to, to do this? Who knows? I don't, I'm not going to say that he's definitely not ready to do it, but I do understand people's concern about that situation. Yeah, and with Dan Moore in particular, I mean, we hear a a lot of the players kind of talk consistently about the fact that he is going up against the level of competition he's going up against day in, day out of practice should give Steelers a good feeling just in terms of kind of a baseline of like, okay, this is what this guy can do. This is what he's been doing for the last month plus of training camp here. But I do understand some of the legitimate concerns with the fact that this is a very new, very young offensive line. And we know how crucial the offline is to, to the success of the offense. Now, is it to say that they are going to falter against Buffalo? I think we are going to see there are going to be some pre-snap penalties. There are going to be Ben probably going to get sacked maybe one, two, maybe a couple times. Because, again, there's such a new way for this offense. But... These are still NFL players. At the end of the day, another big thing everybody kind of forgets, these are in the NFL, albeit, yes, some of them are rookies, but they have a lot that they can build on, and we've seen a lot of good things from them up to this point throughout training camp that shouldn't give Steelers fans a lot of pause in terms of, oh, gosh, are they going to be terrible? They're young and a little – that doesn't mean that they're going to be bad. No, I agree with that, and that's the thing is that – you know, some people are saying, like, you know, Mina Kimes has already said, this offensive line is trash. And I'm like, we haven't seen it. We don't know. You you can't, you can't know. I can't know. I won't say they're great, no. they're good, or they're bad, or they're terrible until I no. see some game footage of them for an entire game playing against regular season opponents. Then I'll start to put my, together my opinions on how this offensive line actually is. What I do know is this, though. You put Dan Moore back at left tackle, and he's openly admitted he's much more comfortable there than right tackle. He's still figuring that out. Chikuma Korfor started 14 games last year at right tackle. He knows the position. He's, he's a professional. He's been in the league. For, this is, what, his fourth year. So that, that makes total sense. You put Dan Moore Jr., not just where he's more comfortable, but right next to Kevin Dotson, two young 
physical offensive lineman that the Steelers are putting a lot of stock in and that they've been very excited to see. And now you get to see those guys kind of work together a little bit on some of those run plays. Like we're talking about, it's not just about protecting Ben Roethlisberger. It's about opening up the holes for Najee Harris to go forward and start dominating the ground game. You put two young, big, physical guys that like to be mean and like to push people down the field next to each other, that may turn into a strength. And who knows, maybe you build some chemistry with Dotson, a second year player, more a rookie that's going to last you for several years. Absolutely. And we know that the responsibilities that the Steelers have put on Kevin Dotson in particular, what they want to see from him, how much progress they want to see, what they want to continue to see in terms of his growth. And I think this is kind of another thing where it's like, hey, you are here, you are in this spot on the line, but we also expect you to bring this rookie alongside you and say, hey, here is what's going to happen. Here's how we do things, you know, show him that mean, nasty, physical sense type thing, which again, we've seen Dan Moore does not have a problem with that throughout training camp by any means, but to kind of have those two working alongside each other, I think can be pretty fantastic in terms of the growth that we potentially could see. And again, there's so many moving parts. There's so many things that are changing. We don't entirely know when Zach Banner will be back. If he, you know, hopefully comes back, obviously, I know Steelers fans hoping sooner rather than later um, as he kind of continues to progress back from his injury from a season ago. But you really kind of see these guys start to gel and develop chemistry. Again, it's not going to be an immediate week one thing, but this seemingly can be beneficial as things kind of keep going here and as we're you know right around the corner from week one. Right. The, the, that, that could be, that's the thing is you're going to build from it. Now, if disaster strikes, we'll deal with that when they play the bills, you know, we'll see how that play, how that plays out. You know, I, I'm, I remember in the 2008 uh, Steelers season when, you know, notoriously they won an off, uh, they won a Super Bowl with, you know, with an offensive line that was considered subpar early in that season. They faced a team like the Eagles that sacked, I think Ben, Ben Roethlisberger nine times. If they get to that bad. Okay big problems like you know that that's something but again we've seen this team work through this organization work through that before um you know ben roethlisberger of course not in the young spry mode where you want him even touched nine times in three games let alone one so you don't want that to happen but again i think that there's a big a much bigger stretch to get this to say that this offensive line is even going to be that bad and if they're even just decent if they're just holding the line at mediocre I think this offense can find a way to work around it. But uh, there's a lot of questions, too, on the defense because Stephon Tewitt's not there. I talked about this briefly, but I wanted to get your thoughts on Stephon Tewitt not being with the Steelers. We'll do that after the break because first got to tell our, our listeners about Built Bar. It's the healthy treat that tastes like a candy bar, and it, it is the ultimate protein bar for you. It's the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team, and it comes in so many different flavors. Whether you want a fruity snack like raspberry, strawberry, or orange, or something different like salted caramel, cookies and cream, Rocky Road, or my personal favorite, Favorite double chocolate built bar has so many flavors to enjoy and the best part they're all healthy they range from 130 to 180 calories they pack 17 to 18 grams of, of protein and they have four to five grams of sugar and only four to five grams of net carbs that's a tasty and healthy snack that'll save you from eating that snack that you'll regret later and stay on task with anyone's diet order today and get your favorite flavor delivered right to your door by going to built.com and use that promo code locked 15 that's l-o-c-k-e-d-1-5 all capital letters no spaces Locked 15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, and I'm joined by Jenna Harner from Channel 11 WPXI. Remember, if you're enjoying this show, Subscribe to us. We're on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Leave us a five-star rating with a positive comment on Apple Podcast, and you get a shout-out at the end of the show. Now, Jenna, I want to talk to you about Stefan Tuit. Put to the injured reserve. Now, I've gone over a lot for our listeners. They understand the situation. His brother died th th this offseason. It was a very traumatic experience. He's dealing with that. His family's dealing with that. They're, the Steelers are giving him all the space to handle that. But there's also the reports that he may have a minor knee injury to be that he that could be dealing with. And it could be a system of being overweight because he wasn't able to work out while he was working through that traumatic experience. So all things aside, everyone's rooting for Stefan to it to do its best for his mental health and for his family and to figure that out. But on the field, 
the Steelers do have, I'd say, a wealth of defensive linemen that could come in and provide adequate adequate, adequate play behind him. There we go. It's um, a Friday. We got this. Yeah, right. You know, it's just it just happens. I just better not do that on skylights, otherwise Dean will fry me. Um, but uh, uh, but uh, in all seriousness, you still got Cam Hayward, the star defensive tackle, one of the leaders of the team. You know, you know, one of the guy the first, the faces of the defense. Um, and you got Tyson Olulu who came back this year i think that is a big deal he's a good he's a he's a really good depth piece there and then they've been happy with chris wormley's production in camp they've been they've been excited about isaiah bugs they've seen they've been happy to see henry mondo and, and carlos davis this seems like a group that if they if any one group on this on this team could take a one player hit the defensive line might be it Completely agree with that, just in the sense, too, that comparing offensive line to defensive line, there are not nearly the amount of question marks when it comes to the Steelers' defense, let alone their defensive line, compared to the offensive line. Again, as some of the struggles that we just talked about, some of those moving parts, moving pieces. But this defense, it's also, you know, it's not catastrophically different. And we know the weapons that they have, like you mentioned. Having Cam Hayward alone, I think, is just such a huge factor for this defensive line because he's a voice of reason. He's a voice that yes. everyone in the locker room listens to. Seemingly, everybody respects in that sense. He's one of those guys that garners respect and just leads by example. We kind of hear about his leadership style consistently, but he's somebody who, you know, really kind of steadies the ship for that defensive line and you know calms the waters a little bit speaking metaphorically here in that sense but <laughs> he is somebody that provides a lot of stability for that defensive line guys respond really well to that knowing that hey there can be some moving parts here and we are still going to be okay I think the fact too that the Steelers knew about the two it situation in terms of they knew they weren't going to have him for the start of camp coming into camp. It wasn't one of those situations where there was a question mark. It wasn't an injury where he practiced for two weeks and then was out. They've been working like this for over a month. They've been going through training camp, going through the preseason games without Stefan to it. We know what to it brings to the field when he's on the field. You and I were talking a little bit before, and he definitely raises the level of play Indeed. when he's on the field and is a playmaker plays. But I don't think not having him there drastic drop off. I think like some people might think there is. So here's the thing. I, I see Stephon Tewitt as an X-factor type of guy on the defensive line. When you can get double-digit sacks as an interior defensive lineman like he did last year, that's a major problem. And all offenses, is, offenses, when they go into the meeting room, they're like, okay, this guy, 91, we are not letting him dominate us. Double him. And that's what made the Steelers' defense such a monster to prepare for because you're like, okay, we got to do that for T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward, and then Stephon Tewitt. That's a lot of problems. but. Here's the thing. You still yeah. have Kim Hayward, a guy that they're going to want to double team. You still have TJ Watt, a guy they're going to double team. You're excited about Alex Highsmith because teams aren't going to be looking to, to, to double team him. He's still going to get his one-on-ones. And Tyson Olulu is a guy you can go in and say, you know what? I'm not, I don't think he's going to get pushed around against the run, and he can create problems against the pass. This is a good this is still a good situation that the Steelers defense have in not just the defensive front, but you still got Devin Bush, you still got Joe Hayden, you still got Mika Fitzpatrick, you still got all these pieces that you're really excited to see get to work this season, and a defense that still was highly successful over the past over the past few seasons. So to me, Stephon to it, yes, big miss that they're, that they're gonna that they're, they're they're gonna miss him for sure on the front, but not Absolutely. in the sense that oh man, like you know, like when they put Cassius Marsh in at outside linebacker last year in the playoffs, it's nowhere near that bad of a situation. No, and this is also gonna be something too that you know when he does get back up to games, is ready to come back and take the field and be with his team in that sense in game play. They are going to add a lot. So if the defense can kind of keep that consistency that they've had for the last number of years here, and then you add to it back into that, that's going to be a really, really, really good thing, especially when we know how tough the schedule is for the Steelers down the stretch of the season. Absolutely. Now, Jenna, we we know this, this is gonna this is gonna be big. And but here's the thing: down that stretch, down the season, that's where I think Stephon Tuitt's worth is going to be the most. Like you said, it, it's all about 
you know, how many times have we seen the Steelers have a really strong start and then just kind of fizzle out because of injuries and just a lot of different issues? That's when you want Stephon to it to be healthy. That's when you want your biggest stars to be at their best. And maybe if he's not playing early and you and he gets himself right, maybe that gives him a chance to kind of get into his flow by the middle of the season and then be back to full strength by a late part of the season. And then as long as you didn't suffer a whole bunch of, you know, a rush of injuries like they did last year and that 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 depleted their defense, then maybe you're in a situation where it's late December, your defense is playing hot, you're healthy, and finally they can go into a playoff run where all of their stars are available for them. That hasn't happened since they made the Super Bowl back in 2010. No, you're exactly right. And with the 17th game this year, I think that's going to be even more crucial than normal is just, you know, maintaining health, keeping an eye on health. So if this is a situation where himself back up and like you said, kind of get back in, we don't know, obviously, but if he is kind of back, um, you know, early to mid part of the season and then kind of progresses and hits his peak at the right time, I'd be bode really, really well for the Steelers. I agree. It, it could really work out for them. But again, thoughts and prayers out to um, out to Stefan to it and his family, yeah, because that's absolutely. still a horrible situation to go through. And that's what's it, most important throughout yeah. this is how his family's doing, how they process everything um, and, and making sure that he is in a good place to, before he even thinks about coming back to football. Um, we did yeah. see him at training camp. So there's a sense that maybe, you know, that, you know, that, that he will, he, 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 can get there, but there's just serious things, life things that come long before a, the, the game of football. But um, we have other questions about veterans, especially on defense. Joe Hayden's situation. I want to talk to Jenna about what opportunities that might open up for the guys behind him for the future as he looks towards free agency next year. But first, I got to tell you guys about betonline.ag. It's that time of the year again, and all eyes are now turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron to start the football season. As always, BetOnline is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. Get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including the half-million-dollar NFL Mega Contest and the $200,000 NFL Survivor Contest, open right now at BetOnline. Head to the website to use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. Be sure to take advantage of their opening day super promo, which is make a bet on Thursday, September 9th season opener between the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your wager will be refunded up to $25. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports from football to basketball to boxing, right down to horse racing. Don't wait and take advantage of all of the great offers available for the 2021 season at betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter, your host. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Joined by Jenna Harner on our Fridays with Jenna Harner of Channel 11, WPXI. Follow her on Twitter at Jenna Harner 11. Uh, Jenna, Joe Hayden, I know we, were at, we were at practice on, on Wednesday. We were at practice together. We're sitting there in the racquetball court in the Steelers facility, you know, just getting ready for them to let us, you know, go out and watch practice. And all of a sudden, Adam Schefter drops a, a, Schef a Schefter bomb. And we're like, oh, Joe Hayden's uh, agent says uh, he wants to hit free agency next year. And then we're like, okay, well, that's his agent. That might just be a ploy. And then Joe Hayden's like, nah, hashtag last dance. Whoosh. Everything's like, well, so much for Joe Hayden wanting to finish his career as a Steeler. That went out down out the drain. But I do think – this is not a situation where anyone's in a, in a bad – anyone's looking bad because of this. The Steelers have a lot of defensive players they're trying to pay over the next few years. Joe Hayden is in one, one you know, is in the last few years of his, of his NFL career, and he's playing at a high level. He wants to get paid. The salary cap is booming next year, so there's going to be a ton of money for all the NFL teams to throw around. Rosenhaus point out he's never been an unrestricted free agent. I believe he was a restricted free agent or something along those lines when the Browns released him and then the Steelers picked him up. But he's never had the chance to test the open market and be like, hey, who wants me? Because that's when most NFL athletes get paid their biggest uh, in their career. But the real question is, because I talked about all that on, uh, on Thursday's show, the real question is, Jenna, what does this mean for the other cornerbacks on the roster? Because Joe Hayden has been the leader of this of this secondary of this of this cornerback room since he joined the team in 2017. Walked in the door, and that's who he was. But now you're looking at Cam Sutton, who's been kind of just a quiet contributor, but a guy who's been versatile. You got James Pierre, who came on really strong this year, but you, we still won't, haven't seen him play a whole regular season game. That'll come against the Bills. Um, and then you got players like Justin Lane. They signed back Arthur Mollett, uh to help in the slot. 
Uh, there's a lot of questions as far as who can step up and can there be a guy on this roster right now that becomes a leader for this cornerback room? It's funny. I feel like the theme of today's podcast is just questions, question marks All that we have going here. <laughs> Indeed, um, it is. But yeah, it's... I mean, this is it is, and a huge opportunity for Cam Summond because we've mm-hmm. seen him kind of throughout training camp again to covering this. You know, compared to a lot of the other reporters that have been all of years, to say the least. But somebody that seems like every year is taking that next step in terms of his leadership, in terms of his growth. You know, even just listening to him talk with earlier this week, he's kind of, he is a little bit quiet and more reserved in that sense, but he was kind of saying, you know, he likes his versatility. He does want to be centered in one spot and he does want to be, you know, able to be that one type of role maker, one type of move to the inside, move to the outside, move to the slot, those types of things. So him, I think this could be a opportunity just to spot up and kind of take on that role and but guys like James Pierre and like Justin Lane you know this kind of prove it you know that you know your guy might not be here next year the guy this corner was brought over by the Browns he so for Pierre and Lane to kind of say what I more than normal not only you need me but why I can be a role maker a Satan potentially leaves to go somewhere else to get paid right I, I agree there's a there's, there's a lot of questions as far as you know how how Joe Hayden might want to handle that situation and, and listen any player that wants to get paid you, you you go do that um when you when you when you're talking about players you know the yeah. Steelers often have a rule in the locker room you don't talk about players contracts you know, the, you, know, the, you keep that to yourself that you let you let you let them handle their situation. It's it's a you know, it's a cardinal. It's a cardinal sin for them because they want to make sure that, hey, everyone's money. That's their own personal business. And because then when you start bickering about, oh, I should get paid more. You should get paid more. That's how you divide a locker room. So no one's going to come at Joe and say, Joe, oh, man, why are you asking for so much money? You know, no, no, no. They're, they're respected. Everyone knows this is a business. And, and when it comes to business, players want to get paid. And I don't think anyone's going to begrudge him of that. Um, and again, Joe Hayden's been an exemplary stealer since he's joined the organization. Never been in trouble. Always said the right things. Always been a leader. Been there to help guys grow. To me, he does exactly what you want for, for a leader. And if you lose him next year at 33 years old, it happens. And, and they'll find a way to bounce back. And who knows? Maybe they go out and they go get another cornerback in free agency or early in the NFL draft. But – Right now, like you said, big opportunities for Cam Sutton, James Pierre, Justin Lane, those guys to say, hey, I deserve a shot to be the future guy out at the starting cornerback position. And, you know, you know, maybe even of those three, we three can be the future that you have, you know, as as a group. So you don't need to go out and get yourself a, you know, a first round cornerback or pay a guy like twelve million dollars a year to come off the free agency and join him. And uh, the Steelers would love that because then that means, okay, all we have to really worry about is T.J. Watt. Minka Fitzpatrick, if we want to bring Ben back and then we can look around and say, all right, where do we want to make our biggest splash moves next year? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that there is some concern in terms of depth when you the cornerback position right now. I heard Keith Butler talking about that earlier this week. And that mm-hmm. could be like I said something that they do look to address. But it does seem like Hayden is going to try to. We also don't entirely know. More like than not. If you know, if I was a betting, then I would have to say I would. He's not on the Steelers next year, but situation too, where he does want to stay, and it's kind of one of those. You know, again, I think more likely than not, test the waters, and another team that has that need will be able to offer him more money. But I'm gonna get someone, regardless of the situation, kind of is, um, in terms of the draft or free agency next year just to address depth there but again like you said this could be a really good position for these younger guys to step up and say hey you don't have to do that you don't have to go find the next superstar i can you know i can provide stability i can make plays when needed and i can be there in a corner piece of this defense 
I, I agree. It, it, it's a big chance to do that. Um, I, I, I'm intrigued. I also think you have, you bring up a good point. This could be Joe Hayden posturing and going into free agency, and then maybe you have a bunch of other teams that like, you know what, we don't need a 33-year-old cornerback. And then the Steelers were like, well, hey – Here's eight million dollars. Here's nine million dollars. Just stick around, man. It's a system that you know that you don't got to adapt yep. to. And a- a- again, another factor here, Jenna, that we shouldn't rule out is if the Steelers are highly competitive this year and they feel like they're going to be highly competitive again next year. Joe Hayden's I'm like, well, I'm not leaving. I want to be in a place where I know I'm going to win. So you know what? This I, a lot of this is also the Steelers don't know what their situation is going to be next year. Are they going to be really good? Is Ben going to stick around? You know, if they are, then maybe they'll be like, yo, Joe, stick stick around. This is going to be good. And maybe Joe's like, I will stick around. But you know, if Joe Hayden knows, it, you know, it's either a rookie quarterback or Mason Rudolph or Dwayne Haskins. He might, like, you know what, guys? I think I might try my chances elsewhere. So. Yep. There, it, it's all about positioning yourself so you can make the better decision later, not locking yourself into something that you may regret unless you feel it is a high percentage chance of it being that situation. So lots of things, too much, too many cards are just up in the air right now for anyone to everything. commit anywhere. So, yeah, everything, just 52 pickup, just throw them all up. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing really ma- ma- makes sense right now. So why, no. you know, if, if, I think a, a better example, it's like going all in. If you're, Jenna, do you play Texas Hold'em poker? I have. I have. So this is like going all in on the flop when you only got like a two pair. If you don't, if you haven't seen a turn or the river, you risking too much by putting all your money down on unless you've got a desperate play. That's the whole point is that why risk that until you absolutely know, hey, this is the best chance I'm going to get. This is the I like the odds here. And I think both sides are just in a situation where like, hey, we're not willing to put ink to paper and lock ourselves into this. Let's see how we are at the end of next season. Absolutely. Well, Jenna, thanks so much for joining us here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. We always appreciate you being a guest. We have football next week. I am pumped. Oh. I, I, like we're now. First of all, Jenna and I get to talk football this week. In fact, uh, tonight, this Friday, you can catch us on Skylight Sky, where we're breaking down high school football action in Western Pennsylvania. It's going to be a really fun night. Check us out. I believe we're on the eleven thirty-ish time on on Channel Eleven. Um, so do check us out 11-15. there. Eleven fifteen. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm so. standing in the I'm standing in the uh in, in the waiting room like in the green room like oh well why where where is everybody what's what's going on I thought this started this stuff. um but uh <laughs> but uh but but in all seriousness next week Jenna and I will be back on our pick game last year I beat Jenna by one game a single game last year and so one. that's how it went down to the wire it's going to be a lot of fun next week we'll have our picks back for you to, to listen to and watch right here on the locked on Steelers podcast Jenna let people know they can find you follow you and get more of your work well thank you again as always for having me this is my favorite part of my Fridays this and skylights combined we got it all happening um, you can find me on Twitter at Jenna Harner 11. You can find me on Instagram at Jenna underscore Harner. Um, and on WPXI, we got a ton of stuff. I feel like I say this every week, but we really do, especially with skylights kicking off. We will be in Buffalo for the season opener for the Steelers. We're talking pit. We're talking Steelers. Penguins are right around the corner. It's insane. A whole lot coming. Super exciting. It's, it, it is exciting. Football season's back, baby. Let's go. I'm Chris, <laughs> I'm Chris Carter. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. You can listen to me Monday through Friday right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Subscribe to us. We're on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and, of course, YouTube. Remember, you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out um, getting our numbers up and showing everything. But also, if you leave us a five-star review with a positive rating or a positive comment, excuse me, on uh, Apple Podcasts, you do get a shout-out at the end of the show. Thanks so much much for checking us out we're done for the weekend i'll be back in your ears monday getting you ready for week one of your pittsburgh steelers